Hello and welcome, my friends. This is Beaver on the Ice. This is something I call Independent Crossroads, Episode 2. Um, the first one I did a while back with uh, Marshall Couture, uh, and it was sort of like it's a half hour episode, um, just like sort of a quick interview, straightforward, and that was that. Uh, I, tried, I decided to like sort of expand on that theme and just make it a working hangout. So uh, both me and my guest tonight will be uh, working away on different pieces and chatting and um, maybe have actual interview questions. But uh, let's just have fun. Uh, and we'll go for as long as uh, Jake can stand it. <laughs> so, <laughs> Uh, tonight I have Jay Ferguson. Um, I mostly know him as a airbrush artist. He does his own work and he does motorcycle work, and he can tell you all about it. Welcome, Jay. Hey guys, how's it going? Thanks for having me, Pete. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> we'll do, do the hand hello. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, sometimes I wish I had two cameras, but somewhere down the line. Um, you want to give a, a brief synopsis of uh, what it is you do, uh, maybe when you started kind of thing? Uh, sure, yeah. Well, I'm Jay Ferguson. My company is called uh, Airheads Custom Airbrush. I've been in business since, when did I start? I started in 1993. Uh, I started painting full-time as a career, so it's... It's been a long time, like 22 years I've been doing this. Uh, the bulk of my business, 80% of my business, is working on uh, doing murals on custom motorcycles. I'm very well known for that here in Canada. Um, but I also do a lot of portraits, um, a lot of dark art I have for sale. And yeah, mainly, if I had to really nail it down to one thing that I do, it, mainly portraiture is 90% of my work, whether it be on bikes or canvas or what have you. I do a lot of portraits. Right, and, and just very quickly, your website is? Oh, it's uh, airheadscustom.com, airhead spelled with a Z. Right, and uh, if you don't know Jay's work, I definitely recommend uh, you go and check it out. He's phenomenal. We see the piece before you. Um, I got it locked on uh, what you're doing there. Oh, cool. And... Uh, yeah, just incredible work. Uh, you know, obviously you're on YouTube. Um, you didn't start that long ago on YouTube, and you're getting a following already. You just joined uh, Facebook to be part of the Arcast, uh, and you've been posting work there, and it's just amazing yeah. work. And uh, thank you. You know, we're happy to that you're like a growing part of it, and. Um, my cat's going to try to break in. Um, <laughs> this is live TV, folks. All right. I wedge a door. I wedge a, a chair up against the door so I can't you know, break in. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I'm. I'm really happy to be a part of the uh, part of the Aircasters now. It's a really cool group. I'm very happy to yeah. be part of it because. Uh, Actually, what had happened to me, um, if you want to dive into a little bit of history, uh, yeah. it was about this time last year, I started having some really nasty back problems, and I ended up, I had to have a back surgery, and that put me, like, I couldn't work for a couple of months because of that. So for the first three months recovering from that, I, would, I just loafed around the house, I could barely move, and I spent a lot of time on the computer, and that's when I started watching all these YouTube videos, and, you know... That's where I found you. I found Jeff and Scott and all the art casters, and that's kind of what got me uh, got me involved in all that. Just because I really just fell in love with the whole community and what everybody's doing. Oh, that's, well, that that sucks, but also good, I guess. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it, it's all good news. Believe me, like everything's yeah. fine now. It's just you know one of those things that had to be done. So I was laid up for a bit, yeah. but actually because of it, you know, I I got to spend time looking on the internet for things that I had never really bothered to look for before, and uh, I found a really cool bunch of guys. 
Well, that's awesome. Well, you know, your, your YouTube, I, you know, I really think it's going to blow up. Uh, um, like I said, you're pretty fresh to it. Um, and, uh, you know, it takes a little while for pe people on YouTube to catch on. But, uh, you know, definitely uh, I'll put links below and YouTube. You're also on Instagram where you have a, a pretty big following there. Yeah, the Instagram's been really good to me. Yeah, if anybody's looking for my Instagram, it's uh, just look up Jay Ferguson Art. You'll find me. Right, and um, yeah, so you know, it's just it's gonna blow up for you. I, you know, you're you're doing pretty good for yourself right now, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, I I, I really have no complaints. <laughs> I'm still getting used to this uh, to the Facebook thing. Uh, I'm. I'm still really on the fence about that, but you know, I really wanted to be part of the Artcaster group on there, so that's why I'm on yeah. it for at least the time being. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, F Facebook has changed three years, and it's not as fun as it used to be. It used to be a lot easier to really connect with everybody, but uh, if if only for the groups, uh, that's why I'm still a part of it. You know. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. Right. So it is. It's just another place to be. Um, the the art is the most important thing, and, and uh, this is just means to uh, get it out there, um, which is why I'm doing you know independent crossroads. Um, my podcast, which did my just uh, audio podcast, Independent Road, which I haven't done for a long time, but I'll get back to it. Um, it has been always about. Um, getting whatever audience I have and, and showing them uh, creators I like, friends of mine, uh, and new artists uh, from all around. Um, you know, mostly I focused on uh, comic book artists, but I had a lot of other kinds of, of people that did different things along the way. Um, the next podcast I'll, I'll put up is episode 100, so I've done 100 of those. And I plan oh, for this. cool! I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've been doing it uh, since 2010. Um, I took oh, wow. the last okay. uh, four or five months off because I got more involved with YouTube, and I just, you know, there's a lot of things I'm doing, and I just want to find balance in doing it all. So yeah, I'm getting that's the hard part. <laughs> yeah, that's the real hard part. Trying to make time for everything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, but, but you're doing a pretty good job, you know, man. Oh. Thank you, thank you, I appreciate it. I mean, uh, I, I think everybody knows knows who you are. Like your your name's pretty large out there in the internet. <laughs> well, yeah, I, you know, I I have that, and that, that's that's awesome. You know, um, I mean, I, I have tons of people following me everywhere. Uh, my YouTube is still young. Kind of, but that's you know slowly growing, um, and it's it's an exciting time uh, for all of us. I think you know, yeah. um, and I think I think uh, Jay, you know, like uh, Jeff uh, Lafferty definitely has been a big part of that, creating the art casters, but also doing his art cast. Uh, he just did episode 151, which I'm a part of his show now. Yeah, yeah, I was listening to you guys kind of on and off this yeah. morning. Yeah, and he, um, what should we call it, uh, Kevin Cross is going to be coming back with his uh, 100 Days of Making Comics Part 2, um, and he's been a big part of, uh, you know, last four or five months of my life uh, with all that's going on with the the 100s crew, um, but I've known Kevin for a long time. But we, you know, all of us have just been becoming close friends and working together, and we got bigger friends. And yeah, it's really exciting. And it seems like um, uh, because of lately, I'm getting more and more like inking work and projects going, and um, every every like comic I'm working on is is going to be another Kickstarter. Uh, so there's going to be tons of promotion, and with my name attached, the book's coming out, and uh, 
yeah, it's incredible. And yeah, like I said, like you know, definitely because of all this, I get to meet guys like you who are so cool and so <laughs> talented <laughs> and so laid back. Too. Thank you. <laughs> Ah, you can't take life too seriously, man. <laughs> I learned that yeah. one a long time ago. <laughs> so, um, let's see. What, what kind of art did you first get into, like when you were really young? Like what? When I was a kid, uh, man. Yeah. What did um, you like? You know what? When, like, as as a young kid, I, I really wasn't that into art per se. Uh, it, it was in my very early teens I started getting into it. Um, okay. Like me, like back, you know, you figure like when you're first starting out high school, back then I was the typical <laughs> late 80s metalhead. I had the long hair and whatnot and all my friends were the same. So I, I started doing a lot of sketching and drawing and whatnot. And then, uh, Kind of the end thing back then, you know, you probably remember this, like you get the back of your jean jacket painted up like your favorite band's album cover. Right. Yeah, so, uh, like, I started getting into, like, acrylic paints, and I was using, like, a lot of Sharpie markers, but a lot of acrylic paints. And I, I painted the back of my jacket, and then, you know, all my friends wanted their jackets done, and then people I'd never met wanted their jackets done, and... Then I started kind of getting a little more serious about it, and I started getting, you know, really nice papers to draw on and started working on canvases and whatnot. And there was a, not too far from my house, like, to, to ride my bike there, maybe took me 15 minutes, there was a comic store called Target Comics, and every weekend, I can't remember, it was either Saturday or Sunday, they had a guy in the back room, and he was airbrushing, just doing, like, T-shirts, Spider-Man T-shirts, what have you. So the one day I saw him, and I was just absolutely fascinated by what he was doing with this airbrush. So I started asking him a bunch of questions, you know, like, what what kind of airbrush is that, and, you know, how does it work? And to be honest, the guy was a real dick, and he really didn't want to tell me any of his secrets. So I ended up, uh, I went to the art store, I was talking to people there, and I bought my first airbrush. Like, I think this is, I don't know, I was probably 16 at the time. And I got a really crappy airbrush and a really crappy compressor, but because back then there there was no one really around to tell you what was good and what was bad, what you should buy, what you shouldn't. So through trial and error, I ended up uh, eventually I got a semi decent airbrush. And again, I was just on the weekends I, I'd be painting friends' jackets, I'd be doing T-shirts and whatnot, and then. Uh, I can't remember how exactly it came to happen, but I got offered a spot at this flea market to go in there on the weekends and paint T-shirts. So I said, "Sure, what the hell?" So I go uh, in there on. Jay, uh, yeah. I'm sorry, but uh, Lisa's trying to get my attention, so it's probably something important. Um, sure. I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I'll, I'll entertain Just, the viewers. Take your time. <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So I guess if anyone's actually watching, I ended up starting working at the uh, painting at this flea market every weekend, doing T-shirts and whatnot, and it actually became a very, very good money for me. So eventually, from there, I ended up because uh, during the week I was driving a forklift at a warehouse. But by doing all uh, working at the flea market on the weekends, I was making more money on the weekends than I was uh, during the week at my job. So I ended up I quit my job, and that's when I opened up my uh, I opened up a retail location. And I had my very own shop, and it kind of all snowballed from there. Now I'm sure as soon as Pete comes back on, he's going to want to recap of what I just said, but that's okay. I'm back. <laughs> You're back. Okay. Well, I just finished I'm my sorry, whole life story. You missed the whole thing, bud. Sorry. Oh, man. Oh, man. I'll watch the tape later. Um, no, like, I, I, I was just going on saying, you know, I ended up uh, getting this gig 
working at this flea market, the Western Flea Market, every weekend, uh, painting T-shirts and whatnot. And because uh, during the week, like I ended up, I I had quit high school when I was 16, so I was working full time driving a forklift at a courier warehouse, but uh, after a couple of months of working at this flea market, it got to the point where I, I literally was making more money in two days painting at this flea market than I was driving a forklift all week, so I kind of parted ways with my boss. I said, you know what, i got to quit because uh, I had enough money saved up that I opened up a, a retail store where I started doing t-shirts, airbrushing t-shirts full time, and I... I had that store for, jeez, let me think, uh, it was probably about four years, and then one way or another, I, I kind of started making a name for myself, and I had all these people coming in with uh, their gas tanks and their motorcycle helmets saying, hey, you know, can you paint my bike? So obviously I, I couldn't paint the bike at a retail store because I was in a mall, so I'd take all the parts home with me and I'd paint them at home at night. And then again, it turned into a, a matter of I'm making more money painting one gas tank than I am for three days of painting a t-shirt. So mm -hmm. I ended up, I, I closed the retail store, and I, I just, ever since then, I've, I've been completely dedicated to doing uh, bikes. Like, not 100%, but like, it, you know, for the better part of 18 years, 17 years, I think I've been painting pretty much nothing but bikes and just, you know, finer artwork on the side. That's great. <laughs> now, about the last couple of years, I'm trying to... It's not that I'd, I want to get away from bikes entirely. Like, I wouldn't want anyone to think that, but I'm, I'm trying to put a lot more time and effort into the finer art and, and kind of steer away from the bikes. Just not get rid of them entirely, but I want to do more fine art than I want to do motorcycle work. Right. Well, it's, it's also an opportunity to, you know be your boss and do what you want, you know. Yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of the beauty yourself. about being self-employed, yeah. you know, like if, if you yeah. find one thing that you like more than another, then there's nothing stopping you from doing it. Yeah. So, yeah, that that is how, how I came to be. <laughs> Very cool. Well, I mean, that's... That's a success story right there, you know. There's there's plenty of uh, people I know struggling that are artists, and that's more the norm. So. Yeah, like I mean, I, 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 I don't I don't want anyone to think that I'm some kind of like a, a paint rock star because that nothing could be further from the truth, but uh. I, I've I've been lucky enough to be very successful. Like I've been very successful uh, at what I do. Like I've made a very good living for a very long time, and I don't see it going away anytime soon. Thankfully. Right. Yeah, that's a great thing. <laughs> that's what you want. So um, I was curious about something, and this may may not be somewhere like you're headed. But I never thought of like you doing all these portraits and stuff, like doing full on scenes, or are you just gonna stick with the portraits? Uh, I, I I really don't know. Um, like I said, I, I I've been doing portraits like just on canvases and boards and whatnot for years for customers and selling them, but uh, now I'm I'm. I don't know. I think you kind of you get a little older, and you you tend to go back to your youth a little bit. And I'm I'm really uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm really getting into doing some of the uh, comic characters, you know, that I used to draw as a kid. Like I know, like you and a bunch of the other guys, that that's really your bread and butter is doing the uh, the comic universe. But I'm trying to, and I do love comics. I read comics. I collect comics. I just don't write comics. Right. But what I've find, been finding myself trying to do lately is uh, kind of do really hyper-realistic portraits, like my take of a, a comic character. Yeah. Like if they were real, what I think they would look like. And, you know, they've been selling really well. Like for the most part, I have them sold before they're even finished. 
So I think that's something I really want to keep pursuing for a while, at least. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah, I just, uh, you know, I've shown Lisa a lot of your work, um, but I went, I guess, on your Facebook page and just scrolled down, and she's like, wow, that's great. Wow, that's great. You know, every piece that came. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And a lot of them are, like, you know, your, your comic book characters made real, and they are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So um, here's a question from Jeff Lafferty. Right. Um, he wants to know, like, you know, usually when we see you work on a piece um, in, in your videos and even in, in the Hangouts, you're uh, most of the way done. Um, I'm just curious about your, your early process of like, starting a piece. Do you just maybe do a sketch or, uh, you know, yeah. maybe a finished um, and just... Yeah, I mean, like, well, directly <laughs> no, I, I, I think my process is pretty much the same as, you know, what, what you would do or what Jeff would do. Um, I actually, when I come on the Hangouts or I'm, I'm doing the videos, I, I, I kind of like to have my pieces at the halfway point because, you know, something like this, if I got six hours into it, like, you know, if I do a two-hour Hangout and I'm, if I'm doing it right from the start, you're really not even going to see what it starts to look like by the time the Hangout's over. So that's kind of why I like to have it at the halfway point, so you can really kind of say, you know, okay, that's what it is. But uh, but the whole process is it's like anybody else. I do a drawing, I'll I'll do a couple rough sketches, and then uh, I'll do a final drawing, and then from that final drawing, I'll trace that onto tracing paper, and then I'll transfer that line drawing to whatever surface I'm working on, whether it be canvas board, illustration board, even motorcycles. Same thing. Instead of using pencil, I'll just use chalk for for motorcycles and. Then I just really start going at it freehand, 100%. Right. Yeah, well, that's, that works. <laughs> yeah, because I know even like on the YouTube channel, not not even just on YouTube, but uh, I get emails and on Instagram, and people always asking me, "Oh, you got to do a full full tutorial, start to finish." And I know I've talked to you about this. You know, I, was, I was talking to Scott about it too. Like it's kind of a not something I really kind of wanted to get into. I don't want to be the guy known as the teacher or anything like that. But being that I'm totally self-taught, I can understand why people would want to see the full process. So you probably noticed I haven't put up a video on my YouTube channel for a little while, and I'm not abandoning it by any means. I'm just I'm trying to figure out the best way because I want to do a full. Like a really, it'll end up being a really long video from start to finish. Like I'll have to speed it up in parts, but I'm just I'm trying to get all that set up, and that's going to be on my YouTube channel in the very near future, a full piece. Right. Well, you know, I, yeah, I know a lot of people that would appreciate that, and um, you know, and and if it's not something you're into, at least you know you do it once, and then you just point to that. <laughs> it's like want to see it? It's right there. Yeah, pretty much. You know, like that. I'm, that's kind of what I have in my head. What I might start doing is, you know, like every every once in a blue moon, do like a kind of like a full length video from start to finish, and like maybe a couple of times a year. But then in between that, it'll just you know, once a week or whatever, just hanging out with me while I'm painting something, you know. And then it that keeps it fun for me. Right. That's cool. That works definitely. And then sometimes, you know, like, <laughs> with what I do, I, I also get stuck in the rut for the fact that uh, some of the subject matter that I paint, and I, I was talking to you about this yesterday when you asked me to do the, the show with you, a lot of it is kind of, I don't know what you'd want to call it, like taboo kind of subjects. and Not that I'm offended by it in any means, but I'm sure if... If I did put a video up of it on YouTube, there there's going to be a couple of people that'll flag it and say, you know what, I really don't want to see that. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, YouTube isn't cable or something, you know. So. <laughs> 
Well, because I know even on uh, on my Instagram account, I had done a portrait a little while back of a a fallen angel. I'm going to call it, and she had her ring uh, rings. Her wings were they looked like they had been kind of broken off. And it, it was kind of a graphic piece. Like it wasn't what I would consider disgusting. I, I thought it was a beautiful painting, but I didn't even have that on my Instagram for a day. And I had a little message in my uh, direct messaging account in the Instagram saying, you got to take that down or we'll do it for you. Mm. Which is kind of surprising, but, you know, it's kind of the ups and downs with art. It, it's very subjective. You know, what one person finds beautiful, another person will find offensive. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you got your website where I'm sure you, you're willing to post anything there. Oh, yeah, pretty much. So... Yeah, but I, I get... It gets a, It can be a little irritating at times because you know sometimes I'll be working on a piece all day, all night for a couple of days, what have you. And I'll pull out my cell phone and I'm taking a picture of it. Okay, I'm going to put it on Instagram, and then you, you're about to push push the send button, and then you get that little voice in your head saying, "Ah, uh, you know what? Maybe you shouldn't do that." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of always think like, you know, I should do something safe. I should do something, you know, just put a masses because I don't want no trouble. <laughs> yeah, that's where you know being an artist can be complicated sometimes. Cause, you know, yeah, safe is easy, but sometimes doing going against the grain is what's going to make you successful. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, you just gotta choose the right venue. Yeah. Oh, um, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't you uh, tell everybody what you're working on there, Peter? Uh, let's see. I have the camera on you. I'll stick on me. Hey. Um, this is just a. It's a Daredevil uh, pinup that um, me and the penciler are going to be making into a print. Um, so we'll get uh, someone to color it up after I'm done inking. Uh, the penciler is Barry McLean, uh, other one as Brooke Staybrook. Um, he's really awesome. I'm doing more and more with him. Uh, we're going to be doing a bunch of comics. I got uh, some other pinups uh, that will be inking some other characters. Uh, but I, you know, for the first one and just the timing of it, um, I decided to do the uh, Data Roll first because we'll be getting that uh, Data Roll Netflix series uh, in April. Yeah. So I figured the timing is perfect. <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, and, you know, I love Dado. Um, there's a little bit of history. You know, my brother was working on Dado uh, and, and sort of like the editor-in-chief kind of uh, for a couple of the Marvel titles way back when. He was part of the uh, Night Sada. And uh, Dado was one of the titles. And it was... Uh, Penciled by Kasada, inked by my brother Jimmy, and written by uh, that dude Kevin Smith, <laughs> who makes movies and stuff. Oh, he actually wrote it. Yeah, yeah, they they got okay, him. I right. didn't know that. Yep, um, they were all like, you know, became friends of it or were friends slightly before it, something like that. Um, all right. The, oh, I think it started when um, Kevin Smith directed Chasing Amy, and they had comic book art in the movie, and uh, J Jimmy and Joe's character Ash. Uh, if you if you freeze frame the beginning, I think you could see Ash a couple of times. Okay. And um, that was a uh, actually. Character I, I named, um, but uh, um, yeah. So they, they have a, a friendship relationship, and, and they work together on. They restarted Daredevil from issue one you know, with a new storyline. 
So it's a little controversial, I think, um, towards the, the end of it, but um, it's really good stuff. Um, and I, I believe his first comic writing, so... Okay, I did not know that he actually used to work in comics. Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, he's done some... Kevin has written some Batman miniseries for DC. He's done, of course, his own Jay and Silent Bob in comic form. Um, I, th I think he's probably written some of that. Um, oh, I'm sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like I always knew he was heavily into it, but uh, I didn't know that he was really working in the industry. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I actually I, I saw that trailer for that that new Daredevil series. I was watching that uh, actually not too long before the show started. It yeah. looks pretty good. Yeah, it does. I'm I'm pretty excited about it. Um, not only Daredevil, but they're gonna have Power Man, who's awesome, Iron Fist, who's awesome. And uh, Jessica uh, Jessica Jones, I think the character is. Um, she was in the book called Elias years and years ago, written by Bendis, I believe. Um, okay. And she and, and Power Man had a relationship. But each one is going to get their own series, which all leads into the, the formation of, their, of uh, Defenders. And right. it's going to be like a movie on Netflix. <laughs> cool. Uh, uh, that's Link of Superheroes. Very cool. Yeah. So, um, are you working on anything coming up that you're excited about? Uh, that I'm excited about. Um, I'm, I'm going to be very honest and say nothing any more exciting than the everyday work I do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no super special projects coming up, but, you know, that could change any day now. The phone could ring tomorrow and that could be a whole different story. So. <laughs> I don't know. Like I'm sure you know. Just like you, I you get emails from people, and you I, there's been more than a couple very interesting offers made to me in the last couple of months. Um, and I just doing this for as long as I have, I take it with a real big grain of salt. And, you know, like there there actually has been a couple of really cool offers made, but it, if anything ever comes of that. It, it's really hard to say. I try not to get too excited about anything until I actually see it in paper in front of me. Gotcha. How, how about, um, I'm sure you must have, like, sketch pads or, or just, like, sketches of maybe characters that maybe you're thinking, maybe I'll do a portrait of that. You know, that oh, yeah, yeah. I got, I got all kinds of sketchbooks just full of drawings, yeah. Yeah, I do that because, you know, I'm, I'm sure it's like most artists, I'll be sitting around or doing something and you kind of get like a, a vision in your head. So I'll end up sitting down for a half hour and just roughing out a quick sketch so that I don't forget what it was. Right. So actually, I do have a... I guess I shouldn't say there's nothing that's too exciting for me because I am... Uh, kind of quietly working away on a series of paintings and ultimately uh, what I'd like to do is put it together into a uh, it, if there's enough interest in it, put it together into put the collection into a book that would be awesome you know, whether that sells and makes money, I, I really don't know and I'm, I'm, to be honest, I'm not that too concerned about it, like I'll have a couple of books done up if I sell them then I can get more, great if not, oh well but yeah, so yeah. That, so I, I'm. What am I now? I'm one, two, four, five, eight. I got nine pieces into it so far, and I'm I'm kind of hoping if I had twenty pieces done. So it'll take me, you know, a couple of more months because I'm really just doing this on the side because they're they're not paying jobs. So 
if I can get 20 right. pieces done and to put it into a book, like I have the original, like the rough sketches, the, the, the final sketch before I painted it, and then I'll do a process shot of the painting and the final painting. I figure that'd be enough to fill up a, a pretty decent sized book. Yeah, by all means, yes, definitely. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah, you so we'll just call, call that a long-term goal for the short future. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, I've been working only a little longer than you. I started in 91, um, you know, and you know, I've, I've worked on a hundred or so comics that uh, people know of, you know, like that have my name as anchor or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I've worked on probably a thousand just like helping out, assistant, <laughs> you know, that I didn't take oh, yeah, credit. Yeah. Um, and, you know, now, now I'm like heading to self publishing and doing my own creations and book. I'm also involved with others and doing that creations. Um, Point of it, I forget. It. Um, <laughs> it, it's it's been a crazy month so far, but uh, think things are are so looking up in in some ways that I'm really excited about, and and the fact that like you know, it seems like every third day I'm I'm getting some message that it's like yeah we should work together we should do something you know, um, things are progressing in the right direction for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, as far as that goes, at least. <laughs> um, I'll figure out the rest of my life on the side. Um, but, <laughs> but it's all fun. You know, it's. I love being a workaholic and, get, and getting stuff done and just, you know, every, every moment of this kind of, you know, even all the work of putting stuff online and um, working, you know, doing video editing, you know, I've been doing the, the live hangouts lately, but uh, when I do it, I mean, um, it's not work, it's, you know, it's all pleasure. Yeah. Yeah, if you like what you do, it's never really work. That was always my goal. <laughs> Do what I like. So, um, yeah, I, I know, it, like, we'll, we probably talked about it and mentioned it elsewhere. But for those like that just come to this video, have no clue about you. Um, do you do public appearances? Uh, how so? Like, um, uh, like motorcycle trade shows or? Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Gatherings, yeah. Yeah, well, I I don't really do like uh, art gatherings per se, but uh, yeah. Uh, well, cause I'm just outside of Toronto, so there's a couple like. This time of year, actually, is when all the motorcycle shows are. So there's a couple of really big shows that I, I always have a pretty fair sized booth at every year. You know, I've got some stuff on display. And uh, the Harley Davidson, uh, the Canadian head office of Harley, it's uh, about an hour's drive away from me. And they have a. Whenever they have a big event, like a new. Uh, they're unveiling the new line of motorcycles or. They do a lot of charity events for like uh, veterans and soldiers coming back from the war and whatnot. They usually have me there, and you know, I'll be I'll be doing live painting. It I don't mind doing live painting at events like that because it, it brings a good crowd and it you know, like for what they're doing, it's all pretty much charity. And I'll right. end up uh, they'll kind of have like a raffle, you know, pay a couple hundred, you know, pay a hundred bucks or fifty bucks for a ticket and. You get to win prizes, and I'll always throw in a painting or something like that. That's so cool. Yeah, I mean, like, I had a cousin that served. Oh, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Um, 
I was just really curious, like, you know, is, is there any sort of relationship between airbrush artists, like, uh, this, you know, are you close with any others that do similar work? No. Uh, no. And uh, actually, you know, this is a good thing you brought this up, that, that the last uh, Synergy Hangout we were doing, when it, it didn't actually make it to air, I was starting to talk about this. Uh, yeah, here... Uh, <laughs> In the States, I know um, there's, like, big airbrush communities and whatnot, and everybody seems to get along fine. Like, they have these weekend getaways and all this kind of stuff. But here in Canada, uh, it, it, at least in this region, uh, the business is very competitive. Mm. Uh, not that I feel like there's a lot of competition, but the artists amongst themselves are very, very competitive. And I'm not that way at all, but, you know, if you run into another guy, uh, painter that does something similar to me at a show, y if I were to try and talk to him, he'll have nothing to do with me. Like, as far as I'm, he's concerned, I'm his sworn enemy. <laughs> like, it's really weird. Like, I mean, if anybody calls me up or, you know, sends me an email, I'm more than happy to talk to them, whatever, but... Yeah, like the artists that are really in business around here, it's super competitive. It's kind of like a cutthroat industry. And I think that's more for the fact that, you know, like there's a lot of work, there's a lot of business, but the actual the suppliers in the shops, like Harley, you know, there's only so many really big Harley dealers and, you know, there's maybe 10 or 12 custom shops, really big custom shops around the area. And I guess everybody's trying to fight each other to get in the door and do work for them, where I, I don't really care. Like, I, I've been around so long, I, I don't need to fight for the work. It, it'll just come to me. But yeah, the other yeah. painters around here, they I'm sure they don't have anything nice to say about me. <laughs> <laughs> but there's, there's, like, parts of uh, art that are like that, like... Um, the Magic the Gathering cards, there's only so many that they could put out. So there's only so many artists that are involved uh, at any one time. And, I'm, you know, I've never done any myself, but I'm sure it's really, like, really competitive amongst the artists and, you know. Oh, so definitely. I mean, it, you know, if you only got 10 slots and there's 100 people trying to get in there, <laughs> it's going to get messy. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's... That's like a thing in, in comics. Uh, you only face if, like, you know, you're working for Marvel and DC, and they only put out so many books. But, you know, meanwhile, they're putting out five times as many as when, you know, I was first buying them, you know, years and years back. Uh, so there's, there's more opportunity for artists, more artists, more writers to get on board. Yeah. Uh, but it's still, like... Yeah, you know, not everybody gets a chance to work for them all in DC. You know, for for how little a time I worked for them, which was you know give or take was like seven year run, working for DC then working for Marvel. Um, and, you know, so. Oh, definitely, yeah. The exceptional few, I would imagine. Yeah, yeah. I I wish I would have done more and had it, had more series and whatever. But meanwhile, there's plenty of people I know, you know, a good part of them. Like, well, you work for them. <laughs> it's like I would have loved to work. <laughs> oh yeah. So, um, are you a, a big Star Wars fan? Or a fan? Uh, I, I like the first, like the original ones, I guess now they're four, five, and six, I guess they call them now. Yeah, but yeah. The, the original ones I was, I was a big fan of. The, those last ones they came out with, you know, to be very honest, I thought they sucked. They were brutal. But I have seen the, uh, the trailer for the that teaser trailer and for the new ones and wow it 
It looks good. I, it's, it's gotten my hopes up because I was thinking, you know what, I don't even want to be bothered with seeing another Star Wars, but after you see that teaser, you're thinking, okay, this guy might have got it right. <laughs> I'm very hopeful. And, uh, you know, I love J.J. and his work. Um, I know he's doing mixed media. You know, th there might be some CGI, but it won't be... Everything, you know, it's it's gonna be a little a little of everything. Yeah. Well, I know I've seen some leaked photos um, online, and I'm sure you have too. But like the sets, like they're using full size, you know, like the scale models of the the X wings and whatnot. Like it's not CGI, and you're thinking, you know, that's that's cool. They're going back to the way it was originally done. Yeah. Because like that that J.J. Abrams guy, like. Uh, I guess I could say I'm a fan too, because I know, you know, growing up as a kid, I couldn't stand Star Trek. Um, <laughs> even when they came out with the the new shows, like uh, the ones with Captain Picard, yeah, all, all those. The Next Generation, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't stand them. I really uh, Star Trek is one thing I just can't get into. But when J.J. Abrams did the Star Trek movies. They're absolutely fantastic. Like I really enjoyed them. Yeah, so, uh, I'm very hopeful for what he's going to do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's. I'm really looking forward to his take and and his approach, and um, I know, like you know, especially from what we see, you can tell he's going make it like the original in many ways and the tone of it and and you know it's not going to be his flashy version it's it's going to be true to the, the original three like you said yeah so and all well we'll find out soon and, enough right <laughs> yeah that, that, right that comes out this year right like at the end of the year it's supposed to uh, come out? i believe christmas yeah yeah that'll so. be here before you know it yeah, I mean, you know, right around the corner is Walking Dead comes uh, Sunday. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm excited for that one too. I'm I'm loving this season. It's, it's so good. It's, yeah, and that, um, I think Bertman says, you know, they're trying something different for the second half of the season. That's going to be very different than anything we've seen before. Before, and I've seen uh, yeah. a glimpse of it. Um, I'm not sure. Not really what. too much, though. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's kind of alluding to things. Um, but it should be, it should play out really interesting, and I can't wait to Morgan sees the group or something. Yeah, because you know he's he's going to be a big part of it, whatever it is. Yeah. So, um, oh, and they also announced uh, the next this the spin-off series, which I don't know when that's coming out, but um, another one, eh? Okay. That's going to be set in LA. So it'll be a different family. Well, it'll be it'll be m more of a family. I don't know, um, and a different cast. Uh, different location, obviously. Uh, it, should, it should be really interesting. We'll see if it's worth it, <laughs> you know, worth watching at all. You could pretty much tell right away. Um, I'm sure they'll make it good. Uh, what was I, that other uh, show? It, yeah. it, it didn't last too long. Uh, they came out with a new one not that long ago. Uh, Z Nation? Teen Nation, uh, I haven't seen it. Lisa saw it. She, Didn't that already get canceled? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Maybe it's just one of those shows with a weird schedule. Um, yeah, because I caught I caught the very first episode of it, and it, it was almost comedic. It was so bad, you know. <laughs> I just saw a minute here or there. Um, she kept mentioning like it's got stars in it. I don't know. 
like people will recognize from other shows or something. But uh, I don't know. I, I'm not really interested. I guess. <laughs> yeah. I don't blame you. Yeah. I I love 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 The Walking Dead. So that's where my heart is. <laughs> I I can totally understand that. <laughs> <clears throat> and you, you did a, a, a uh, Daryl recently. That was a cool piece. Uh, yeah, actually, no, that, that Daryl I had done a little while ago, I just, uh, oh. I, I finally figured out how you can um, share your Instagram pictures on your Facebook. Right. So I, right. I, I figured I'll just, you know, slowly, you know, maybe one a day or something, I'll just shoot off some of my older stuff onto the Facebook account because... I really can't be bothered sitting at the computer all day and uploading a bunch of photos to Facebook. Right. No, that's Yeah, but at least now that I got that figured out, every time I post something to Instagram, it'll go on Facebook automatically. So it saves me a lot of labor. Yeah, I mean, that's... A lot of people do that. <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I miss... Instagram. It's like I still have my account up, but Lisa changed phones, and that's how I was getting on Instagram. Yeah, you uh, you gotta <laughs> you gotta get a cell phone, man. You, you really yeah, gotta get yourself I, a cell I, phone. It, it it would only be my only reason to have it, though. Would be to use Instagram. It's like you know, I I use Skype for phone calls, and I'm in front of the computer all the time. Why you know why have a separate yeah, but, true. Um, I guess it 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 would. I mean, it is worth it to have Instagram. And plus, you know, eventually I'm gonna start doing a lot more conventions, and you can't. You know, I'll need a cell phone then. Oh, definitely. But, yeah. Like I don't know. Yeah. I can't speak for anybody else, but I found Instagram just to be absolutely fantastic. Like it's it's treated me really well. You know, I've got a very yeah. good fan base on there, and I've I've made a lot of sales off there. So I, I definitely I can't complain about it, and I'd never get rid of it. Yeah, like it's just yeah. one of those things. Once you learn, you know, like the proper uh, what do you call them, the hashtags to use on on your post, then it definitely gets out to the right people, and and they'll spread the word for you. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, part of it was like because I was using Lisa's phone, I would only have it for like half hour here or there, like every yeah. other day or something like this. So it's not like I really got to play with it. Um, but I mean, the part of the good thing is, you know, you really need a cell phone to work it. But I can do things um, online, like I can check out what other people are. Posting fine. Yeah, like you, know, you can still like, look at whoever you're you're following, and you can comment on yeah. it, right, from the computer. Yeah, yeah. You just can't post your. Own I stuff. can't see like if, if somebody tags me, I can't see that. You know, there's a certain thing. It's because it's a weird sort of website. Yeah. But, well, uh, you know, on the same. Really, Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I think it's really you know, it's really useful for building a massive following. Oh yeah, like I, I find the platform a, a hell of a lot easier to use than uh, than Facebook. Just the way it's set up, like it, it, like for an artist, yeah, it's an essential tool. I think if you're an artist and you don't have Instagram, you're really doing yourself a big disservice. Definitely. Yeah. But you know, I like I, I was going to say okay. before, on on the same token, mm -hmm. I'm pretty yeah. sure some <laughs> somebody's going to come out with a. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was going to say somebody's going to come out with a program for for the PC that you'll be able to upload your stuff. They just haven't done it yet, you know. Well, you know there are um, hey Tristan Grant is in the uh, comments feed. Oh, hey Tristan. Um, but yeah, if if you like, if you Google Instagram, there's like websites, but I think they're just like. You know, spam or, or yeah, try to scammers. Yeah. get you to join the site or something. Yeah, like, you know, like click here to follow everyone. 
<laughs> yeah, no, I, I wouldn't be clicking on that. But I'm sure eventually somebody will come out with a program. Like, maybe even Instagram will come out with a PC program because, I mean, I'm actually surprised that they don't because there are people that don't have cell phones like yourself and you figure they're losing business that way if they're if you can't access it. Yeah, and maybe, you know, maybe it's just not aware. So, uh, if you know it, message me on Facebook. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it is it is a great site and definitely the potential there is greater than every other place online combined. Seriously. Oh yeah, like it's absolutely crazy. Yeah. And uh, besides yourself, I know uh, uh, a few other people who are uh, using it correctly and. Uh, you know, doing well for themselves. Yeah. Yeah, like it's surprising, like even the amount of uh, like galleries and, and whatnot that are on there that will literally contact you just because they see your work on there. Like I, I've had right. more than a few people, like galleries and whatnot, message me saying, oh, you know what, we <laughs> want to talk about showing your work and not that I don't want to, I just haven't gotten around to it yet, but yeah, it's definitely there. Uh, Tristan says, everyone needs to see Jay's work. There you go. Oh, it's thanks, truth. bud. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Really digging the piece you're doing. It's looking awesome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you know, because I was... Uh, sitting here waiting for, you know, whenever you're going to start up the show, and I I wasn't going to be working on it, but I, I just kind of got bored, so I actually got quite a bit of it done before we started the uh, the show, because I couldn't just sit here being still any longer. I couldn't take it. <laughs> well, I had to get my taxes done. That's, that's one relief off my back. Yeah, like I, I, my brother, he lives in uh, in San Diego. He's been there for, I don't know, three years now, I think. And I remember last year he was talking about the taxes, like compared to Canadian taxes, and he was telling me what an absolute nightmare it is to get it done. No. Especially for him, because now because he has to do his Canadian and American taxes. So, uh, and well, yeah. if you're working in the States, you get taxed on your Canadian any holdings you have in Canada, you get taxed on that. It, like, yeah, apparently it's pretty complicated if you got like a dual citizenship. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, my, mine's pretty easy and straightforward. I almost could get it done myself, but my, uh, you know, Lisa, my girlfriend, her, her aunt, does it uh, for me, and she knows, you know, she knows accounting. She does it for other people. And she doesn't yeah. charge us, so. <laughs> well, that's a bonus, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Free is good. It's like, oh, free. <laughs> so what else is going on? I was going to make mention um, Jeff about something. Yeah. Oh, uh, I know something. Um, you know the the morning hangouts he does. He, you know, part of his uh, archivist. I don't know what what your sort of mornings are, but and if you ever heard him say so, but um, you're more than welcome to come on if you're free while his show is on. Oh yeah, no, I, I've never heard him say that. No, because okay. usually uh. When I'm working, I, like uh, my computer's in another room, and I, I just got the speakers cranked so I can listen to it while I'm painting. Like this, actually right. here, I got a little uh, what do you call it? A little tablet that I'm using here for this for this hangout. But yeah, no, I you know I uh, that'd be great. Yeah, I'd love to come on. That'd be a blast for sure. <laughs> so you know, whenever uh, you know, just like message one of us. And say, hey, I want to come on. You know, me, Jeff, or, or Mike. Uh, I mean, 
Um, yeah, he's he's tr he tried twice recently to get guests, you know, like um, some artists that you know we don't normally talk to. Um, right. And he's still waiting for uh, that to happen. But he, you know, oh, like they didn't show up or something, or he, yeah, like the, the first one thought it was uh, PM instead of AM. Uh, and the second uh, one um, had to drive his wife to work that morning. At this, you know, that was during the show time. Uh, oh, okay. He, you know, uh, complications. But um, but he he did say not too long ago, like you know, he does want to open open it up to other people if they want just want to pop in and. Or even stay the whole show, you know, whatever. You know, everybody has different kind of schedules, but um, yeah. he, he's open to it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, next time you're talking to him, if you talk to him before I do, which you probably will, yeah, tell him I'd be, uh, I'd be more than happy to come on, for sure. That'd be a blast. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you can come tomorrow, then we'll get you on tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, you know, like, I'm I'm up with the birds. I'm always painting pretty early in the morning, so. Yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that'd be kind of cool, because, well, I mean, you know how it goes. You usually end up working by yourself, talking to yourself all day long. It'd be nice to have somebody to talk to while you're painting. <laughs> Much like I am right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think I um I did the hangout with him and then we talked for another couple of hours afterwards. Um and then I, I think I just like took a break, had had like a late lunch and when I went back to work I actually turned on um, Spotify and played some random music. And I was like, man, I haven't listened to music in a long time. I'm only like following everybody's videos and listening to podcasts and, and all these hangouts on my part. It's like I'm nonstop talking and listening and, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, I hear you. I totally understand. Yeah. Just to sit back and listen to music, it's like, wow, I remember this experience. Yeah, because that's usually what, you know, during the day, that, that's all I, I got going. Like, I got a, I got a stereo in here, and I'll, I'll just crank tunes all day. But whenever I can remember, I'll, uh, I'll crank up my uh, computer speakers so I can hear you guys in the morning, but I can only hear so much. I can't get it that loud that yeah. I can hear everything that you guys are saying. <laughs> yeah, I can understand... Yeah, like I say, if I'm invited in, into the uh, into the chat or the hangout, uh, I can just use my tablet and do it that way. That's fine. Yep, that would work. We'll get you in. Yay! I'm not <laughs> going to be lonely in the day anymore. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you'll you'll become a full member. <laughs> Nothing better. So are you going to be uh, that daredevil that you're working on? Are you coloring that, or is somebody else going to be uh, doing colors on it? Somebody else is. I think, um, you know, me and Barry are doing a, a comic called End of Days, and there's a, a colorist, uh, Jay Primus something... Sorry for forgetting the last name. Um, who's coloring that? And I think he's, you know, Barry Eston would be willing to uh, color these these prints. And I think he said yes. Uh, so I hope I'm right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, you know, it's going to be somebody else coloring for sure. Um, you know. 
things to do, but I have a lot to learn. You know, I do want to get like a tablet or something so I can, you know, do it right. Yeah. You know, but then again, I also want to paint. You know, <laughs> you, all you guys hanging around and <laughs> painting and ever brushing and uh, colored markers and, you know, everything else. Yeah. I got to throw some color up, too. <laughs> Somehow. Well, I totally, yeah, I, I totally understand. You know, I, you see people doing their thing and. You always want to try it out yourself, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, like I actually, uh, I get fascinated by some of the some of the people on YouTube that do the Copic markers, uh, the the drawings on there, right? Like the speed paints, and I I'm actually blown away by what people can do with markers. Yeah, it's you know. It's just like painting. I mean, you know, you, you have the right tools. Um, you can do amazing things with them. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I've done some acrylic. I, I've done some watercolor. If anything, I would lean to is those two. Um, you know, besides like computer coloring, uh, yeah. but hands on. I think I'd love to. Pick up a, a batch of books and go wild, and, you know. Maybe, maybe do some superhero fantasies like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that'd be cool if you could start doing that for sure. Yeah, not that. Yeah, I mean, my schedule right now is insane, but somewhere down the line. Yeah, because I know even, uh, actually, the last time I was at the art store, I was looking at, uh, what do you call them? The, those things that Scott uses, Copic markers? Copic markers? I'm not sure how you pronounce that. But Copic, I, think, I, was, yeah. I was looking at a couple of sets of those, and wow, they're really pricey. Like, to just, to want to pick it up and just experiment with it, it's a lot of money you got to dish out. Right. It is. Uh, but the, the results are, are worth it, um, I guess. <laughs> you know, like people find deals on them. Like, uh, I've seen set, like sets of 50 go, you know, that go for half price. You just got to look out for the deal. Yeah. No, I've, I've worked with this, almost the same tools for years, um, and they're kind of limited. I mean, you know, I use a brush, I use a quill, I use rapidographs, you know, you know ink, and, and <laughs> da da da. You know, it's like very simple. But like, I want to, you know, expand beyond that, of course. Yeah, well, you're definitely you're you got some serious skills with the tools that you use. Thanks, dude. <laughs> yeah, like I say, even you know, like with what you do, like with the inking, uh, you know, like you uh, to watch your videos or to watch uh, Scott's videos. Uh, again, I find that. For me, it's absolutely fascinating to to watch that process. Yeah. Like it's just a skill set, you know. Like I've never invested any time into at all, and I could watch those videos all day because to me, it's just absolutely fascinating how it's done. Right. Yeah. And the the funny thing is, like you know, even even before you know meeting all you guys, I would have thought it was all done with a pen. But then you know you're seeing, you know you're using a quill or uh, nibs and and whatnot, and it's the polar opposite of how I I expected that it would would have been done. <laughs> yeah, you don't you don't know until you see somebody do it. Yeah, um, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. 
Yep. Um, is there uh, anything you ever wanted to tell your audience but haven't? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a question. Um, <laughs> nothing. I I have no burning secrets that I'm I'm dying to get off my chest. Uh, <laughs> no, not, not burning secrets, but uh, I don't know. Um. You know, it, 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 what I do on YouTube is an extension of what I do, you know, what I was doing in my podcast, which, uh, you know, came from me being part of a radio show, which, you know, I guess I jumped on that because I had some theater experience before that. I mean, I could follow the path backwards, and like I, I know I did this because I did that before, and I did that because I did something else before that. Yeah. Yeah, no, um, I mean, my life's an open book. Yeah. You know, if people don't already know the story, <laughs> all they gotta do yeah. is ask. Um, yeah, I don't. I, I, I can't sit here and say I really got anything pressing that, you know, I'd like to tell people. I really don't. <laughs> um, what kind of, um, like, specifically with, with YouTube, what kind right. of uh, reactions are you getting from people, like, you know, commenting on your videos? Or... Uh, all really good comments. Uh, Everybody seems to really like what I'm doing. Well, you tend to get... I'll get two different kinds of comments. You get the one comment that says, wow, you know, absolutely phenomenal artwork, you rock. And then you get the other comment that says, you know, please tell me all your secrets. What airbrush do you use? What paints do you use? <laughs> How can I yeah. paint like you? Okay, that's... That's a big question to answer. <laughs> Yeah, it's you basically can't. either people supporting me or people saying, please teach me more. Right. Do you do you um, know who you, your audience is? Like, I know, like, I have a lot of people that do comics that follow me. Whether, you know, some are starting out, some are, I wouldn't say season pro, but those that have been doing it for a while, just curious, like, how I'm approaching, like, talking about comics. Um, yeah. Um, but it's, like, fans of art. Uh, I know I have a small female audience, uh, and I would like to do something to attract more. Because, you know, I know there's a lot of women in comics, um, I just haven't done it yet, I guess, you know, something that they would really focus on. Yeah. Um, but I, can't, I think for the most, is there anything the most like part, that? my audience, yeah, <laughs> my audience is all pretty much other artists. I can tell that, like, especially from, you know, the people who have who've subscribed to you, you can click on their channel or their Google profile and, you know, there are, there's a couple of very successful artists and there's obviously a lot of aspiring artists. You, you can even see through, you know, when you see their other subscriptions, like, I'll be one of a hundred different airbrush subscriptions <laughs> that they have, so I'm just assuming that yeah. they're trying to learn to, to airbrush. Right, yeah. And like I say, that that's something I, I, I've kind of struggled with on and off, because, you know, I... I started doing the YouTube videos just from, uh, you know, watching Jeff's videos and watching your videos and whatnot. I was, it's like I say, when I was healing up for my surgery, I, I thought it was great. Like, you know, you get, it's like you're having a conversation with somebody that's not in the room, and I, I, and they're talking about art, and I thought it was just such a 
fantastic concept. So that's why I, I, I said, you know, when I when I'm healed up and I can start doing these videos, I'd, I'd like to do the same thing. There's, I don't know. Maybe some people enjoy just listening to me rant on about whatever I'm talking about, but it seems like a lot more people want me to kind of be the uh, the class instructor rather than the guy talking at the campfire. So. <laughs> Well, you know, it, um, if anything I've learned about business, it's like companies, a lot of companies um, tell their audience what they like, you know. I, I'm not saying, like, you know, we're any big companies here and, and we're telling our fans, what, you know, what they like. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I've seen it in, in real businesses uh, across the board. It's like the... They don't cater to the audience. They cater to what they're trying to sell. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what that has to do with anything, but <laughs> it's it's my uh, schooling. Like uh, I took advertising and art in, in college, and I guess some stuff is, is stuck in my brain. Comes up very so well. <laughs> well, maybe I should start doing that in my uh, videos. I'll just start telling everybody, hey, you like what I'm doing. So. <laughs> You want me to keep okay. doing it. What's going on messages? So, what else is going on? Um... I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to figure out day to day, but uh, I would like to. Well, if this, if this, if I could only do one convention this year, you know, and it's it's too late to really like go to this convention uh, and set up and have a table and and all that jazz. But um, I would like like to go. Just as a fan, and just to see, you know, like ninety percent of my fans, uh, my fans, my my friends, um, which is New York Comic Con. Like I, I haven't been there, and a lot has happened in the last couple of years that has been building, and you know, because of all uh, I'm doing now. Um, I think that would be a worthwhile convention to go to. Um, oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. Like, definitely. I've seen, it. Yeah, I've seen the clips online, like, you know, like the YouTube. You get all the conventioneers and all that kind of stuff and uh, yeah. doing their Comic-Con wrap-ups and, you know, you see the footage of the New York Comic-Con and, man, it looks just... <laughs> it That is one huge production. Yeah, I mean, you know, figure if, if you're in the industry, you, that that's definitely something you'd want to be a part of in one way or another, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, I I'm from New York and I've been there plenty of times, but I, you know, I never went to a convention to be heavily like, oh, I'm going to to get work or anything. Um, you know, it's it's always been about going to see my peers, going to see my friends. Um, you know, if I had a table, then, then you know, meeting my fans, um, you know, I may not be a, a huge financial success, but lots of people know me, know me by name and my work and whatnot. And, you know, I'm happy with that all. <laughs> yeah. Um, Comic comics is a tough field, but uh, to make money and whatnot. But I, I'm going to change the perception. I'm going to work my ass off and be like success doing my own stuff. That's you know been my goal for a very long time. Um, so. Well, you know, there, there, there's nothing you can't do if you put your mind to it. That that's always been my theory. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, I, I truly want to, I, I mean, like, the, the basics of this is that I love what I'm doing, and 
by striving for like you know something incredibly out of my reach is the is is what gets me out of the out of bed every morning and you know busting my ass. <laughs> Yeah, no, I hear you. I want to I be really good at what I do and better than I was today, you know. Uh, that's kind of the, uh, the secret of life, right? Every day, just try and do it better. Yep. Absolutely. So how long you figure we've been... Uh, how long has this been running for there, Peter? Um, this episode? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, we started, was it about 10.30? I guess an hour? Okay. So, I mean, I mean, you know, for a episode of this, like, you know, I was thinking an hour or two hours, um... But I, I've had an exhausting week, so I'm like, I am ready. Yeah, no, you know, like, I, I was really hoping we would have been able to, to start it a little sooner than we did, but, I mean, that, that's totally cool, but, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. kind of getting to the point where I'm thinking, you know, I don't want to be doing this all night because I do got to get up early tomorrow, and I got to take some stuff to go get cleared at the body shop, so. Well, that, that's, that's way cool. I mean, that works for me. Um... You want to uh, wrap up, mention your, your, your uh, website again, where they find you, and uh, that sort of thing? Sure. Uh, yeah, uh, Jay Ferguson, you can find me at airheadscustom.com, airheads with a Z. I'm on YouTube, look for Airheads Custom, and Instagram, I'm on, uh, what is it, Jay Ferguson Art, but everything's linked to my website at airheadscustom.com. Right, and... Yeah, definitely go check out his work. Uh, I'll post the links, like I said, in the description box below. Uh, it's Independent Crossroads. It will be my new ongoing series. I'll try to do it at least twice a month. I'm going to have uh, guests galore, and we'll be working like we are. And, and uh, you know, I'm sure as I do a couple more, people will start to knowing about it, and we'll get more audience in the chat. We had a couple of people show up today. Thanks all that did. Yeah, and all yeah, the fan base. Talk, you know, subscribe wrong. to my channel if you have. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you can support all I do on my Patreon. Um, Peter Pony Addy on Patreon.com. So uh, thanks, everybody. Thanks, Jay. Totally appreciate Pleasure's it. Pleasure's all mine. Thanks for having me, buddy.